So the next standard view that we'll look at is the short axis views, still from the right and still from the parasternal location. So these will now be the right parasternal short axis views. So we'll be cutting the, the heart basically into a cross section and looking at it in various levels. And we'll look at how to do that just now. We'll always start by obtaining our, our right parasternal long axis for chamber view, optimizing that and moving on from there. So we'll look at how to, how to obtain the short axis views once we've, once we've got that. So again, I'll feel for the apex beat. I've applied a bit more ultrasound gel. So we almost have our, our long axis view. We just need to make a slight adjustment. We'll rotate slightly anti-clockwise, thumb to bum. And there we have a nice view. So what we now need to do is actually rotate even further in the anti-clockwise direction to obtain our short axis view. So what we'll do is now rotate, always watching the screen and making very small movements. We will see our five chamber view start to come into, into play. So we now have the aortic outflow tract with the aortic valve. And we'll keep rotating. Until we're in a short axis view. Right now we're at the level of the fish mouth is, the, is what some people term this. What we're actually seeing here are the mitral valve leaflets. We'll come back to this one in a moment, but we want to go at the level of the papillary muscles, or also called the, the corde tendine, or the mushroom view. So we'll try and obtain that just now. What we'll need to do is actually fan the probe, staying in this location, to obtain that view of the, of the papillary muscles. And that's what we have just now. The things that you're looking for in this view in particular is that the left ventricle is nice and round. What we're seeing here is the papillary muscle, another papillary muscle. This is the left ventricle. And this is the right ventricle that's just wrapping around the top just here. What we can evaluate in this view is we can look and see how round the left ventricle looks. If there's flattening of the interventricular septum, that can give us a little bit of an idea that there may be increased pressure within the right ventricle. As the right ventricle has greater pressure, it actually flattens out the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle. What this gives us an idea of is if there is some sort of back pressure. So if we're getting increased pressure within the right ventricle due to some abnormality within the pulmonary valve or the, the outflow tract through the, through the pulmonary valve. This is also if we were performing M-mode measurements, which we won't be looking at today, this is the ideal view to perform an M-mode measurement. So we'll just look at how to obtain that one more time. So I have my thumb on the marker. The thumb will be pointing towards the sternum. And we will obtain the long axis view, the four chambered view. I'll feel for the apex beat. Go in the intercostal space. And we actually have the five chamber view. There we have more towards the five chamber view. So if we were in the five chamber view and wanted to get to back to the four chamber view, we just do the opposite and we actually rotate the probe clockwise ever so slightly, about 10 to 15 degrees.
and we obtain our right peristernal long axis four chamber view. It just takes practice to get these optimized. So we'll now look at the right peristernal short axis view. So we'll rotate anti-clockwise. We'll see the outflow tract. We continue rotating anti-clockwise. We see the fish mouth view, which is the mitral valve leaflets. And now we're at the level of the papillary muscles. And that is the right peristernal short axis view at the level of the chordae tendae and the papillary muscles.